previous lesson, we looked at how we could remove a black background from a seahorse, combine that into another background to get a new composition as such. In the second part of this lesson, we are going to look at how we can combine the part of another animal into the seahorse. Uh, in other words, if this seahorse had a genetic mutation, which is what this assignment was all about, and it had a tiger's head, what would it look like and how do we combine that seamlessly in Photoshop? Hence, this is part of this, this is the second part of a request for a particular assignment made by uh, science teachers. So, to proceed, we're going to go to back to Photoshop and we're going to open the original PSD file that we had saved in the first lesson and remember by saving it as a Photoshop document or a PSD file we managed to keep all of our layers which is what I'm turning on and off right now over here okay the next part is to go to the internet go to Google Images and I did a search for tigers and I put my search term was side tiger view and I found this little fellow here and I'm gonna right click on this copy this image go back to my original composite file of the ocean and I'm gonna paste him in here like that now let me zoom in by doing command plus sign and then you'll recall if we hold our space bar we can move the image across and position it accordingly. Now, in this case, to select his head, uh, previously with the seahorse, we used the magic wand because the magic wand is great for selecting a uniform color. But in this case, you can see there is no uniform color. There's dark blues, there's a streak of red in the sky, and so on and so forth. So we're going to switch to another selection tool. And remember, Photoshop is, a good Photoshop anyway, is all about selection tools and layers and in this case the first three tools below the move tool are your selection tools now this the third tool down is the lasso tool but if you you'll notice when there are little arrows on these icons and you click and hold on them it gives you a fly out menu of other tools and I'm going to select the polygon lasso tool the polygon lasso tool is really neat because when you click unlike the lasso tool which is a freehand draw tool basically when you click you get a little anchor point every time you click you get a new anchor point and so it allows you a lot more precision as you move around especially if you keep your the distance between your clicks short then you're gonna get a lot more precision in the shapes of the object that you're selecting so in this case I'm moving right around the ear trying to get as much as the original shape as possible. Now let me hold the space bar and move this down and get down to the forehead and then across the nose. And I'm clicking all the way through here. And as I click, every time I click, I get a new anchor point. There, now I'm gonna move my clicks out here and I'm gonna hold the move tool. I'm going to hold my space bar and move the image down and click up here and I'm going to move this over a little more again and I'm going to come right down to the tiger's torso right about here around his shoulder blade and that should give me enough of his body and look as I come back to the starting point it's kind of like joining point A and point B now let me zoom out, show you what I've selected. If I hit delete, there we go. We start to see the water underneath. That water comes from this layer, of course. If I turn the eye, the visibility eye on that layer, the bottom layer, and turn it off, we'll see a checkered flag. Let me turn the two seahorses off as well. So the only layer that's turned on right now is the tiger. So when I start deleting anything uh, around him, I see a checkered box in the background and that checkered box represents invisibility or the alpha layer. Now let me continue here by just gonna close this layers window so we can see more what we're doing. Let me continue now by using the uh, magic wand. I'm gonna switch tools now, switch selection tools and I'm gonna grab the magic wand I'm gonna set the tolerance to about uh, 24. Now when I do, oops something funny happened there, hold on. 
let me edit undo. Go back to layers. The reason it did that was because you'll notice that my active layer was on background. Even though it's not visible, when I clicked with the magic wand, I was actually selecting the blues from the background. So that's an interesting little mistake I made there. Remember, I'm working with the tiger, so I have to click on the tiger layer. I can turn the visibility of the background layer off, but I have to click on the layer that I'm working on. And right now I click on this layer. It is highlighted in blue. That's the tiger layer. Now again, if I select with my magic wand, you'll notice it grabs a nice area of blue. I could hit delete and get most of those blues out of there. I'm going to click under his chin now. And once again, I got a pretty good area of blues. And let me zoom in, go much closer to his, his mouth, and you'll notice that there's a lot more blacks there that we didn't get. And as I try to grab those, I'm kind of deleting some of the whiskers, but that's not a big issue. Okay, I'm going to do a little uh, delete now. I'm going to delete what I've selected. So select, deselect. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out a bit, and I'm going to select just the head. But before I do that, before I do that, those, the, those little blocks around the edges are really bothering me. So I'm going to go take my eraser tool, which is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11th tool down. And I'm going to use my open and close brackets to widen and shorten there we go, the brush of my eraser. So that's right to, you, to the immediate right of your P on your keyboard is your open and close brackets and that allows you to shrink and uh, widen your tool. Let me command plus to zoom in and let me once again go in there with my eraser and I'm going to grab the edges here. There we go. Now what I'm doing here with the eraser is not only removing the excess black but I'm also feathering. You'll notice that it's a lot smoother. The deletion points that I'm I am making now right here are pretty smooth. You can tell around the chin as opposed to around the head they're pretty chunky. And we're going to fix that in a second. So the next and final phase here is to select just the head. So let me grab the polygon lasso tool again. Come around the torso of the body. Hold my space bar to move the image. Hold my space bar again. And double click in there. I've got now, I've selected just the torso. I'm going to copy this. Command C and I'm going to Command V and paste it. Let me take my move tool. I'll move this new head around. I'm going to go back to my layers, open them up, and I'm going to turn the visibility of the layer with the lion off because I don't really need him anymore. I need the head. And let me label this head. Double click on layer 4 and label it as the tiger head. Now before I mentioned I was going to smooth out the edges. Watch this. I'm going to take my magic wand again and I'm going to click on the outside of the tiger which selects the entire background. And now I am going to go to the select menu, go modify feather, and I'm going to feather it by the edges, meaning smooth the edges by, let's say, two pixels. Now, you're not going to see it right away. You have to hit delete on your keyboard to actually see the smoothing happen. And if you hit it once, twice, or three times, it'll smooth more and more. Watch this. As I hit smooth, you see that smoothing? There you go. Let me deselect, Command D. You notice the edges are a lot smoother now. Okay. Now let's turn on the layer with the seahorse. Okay. And let me take the move tool and let me grab my lion. And first I'm going to have to flip his head. So I'm going to go to transform, flip horizontal. And let's try to line him up with the seahorse. I think it might be easier if I click on the seahorse layer. Let me zoom out for a second. Move the seahorse out a bit and rotate him so he's kind of in position to assume 
the tiger's head. Okay, and once I've finished my rotation, I'm going to hit enter to register the new rotation. Next, let me go back to the head. There's, we're going to have to do this a few times, going back and forth. Now, we need to kind of fit this body onto the seahorse's body. And to do that, I'm going to go to the Edit, Transform, Warp tool. Now, the Warp tool allows you to grab certain sections of the line and really distort those por portions of his body so that they can fit the contours of the seahorse's body. And let's not lose those little edges on the seahorse, those little prickly edges on his back. And there we go. Okay, not bad. Hit enter on your keyboard to register the new changes. Now let me turn this off for a second. And let's erase the head on the seahorse. But before we do that, keep a backup copy of this seahorse. I'm going to name it Seahorse. Okay. Keep a backup copy. So I'm clicked on the seahorse layer. Click on the top right menu in your layers window and say duplicate layer. Call it Seahorse Copy. There we go. And I'll turn it off. And the reason I kept a copy of the seahorse layer is in case I make a mistake, I'll have I can go back to the original copy because I'm really going to mess around with this original seahorse here. So I'm going to first grab my eraser tool, and once again using my open and close brackets, or going up here to the eraser tools menu, I can choose the slider and get a bigger eraser tool. And there we go. That's kind of what I wanted. Now let me turn the head of the tiger back on. And let's start erasing part of the body. But before we do that, I want to blend this body with the seahorse. And the only way I'm going to blend this is if I slowly erase part of the tiger's body, but not completely erase it, so that it becomes a bit see-through and we start to see the seahorse's body coming through. So again, um, I go to the tiger's head. And what I'll do is I'll take the eraser tool and I'll put the opacity of the eraser tool down to about 30-40%. Opacity meaning its strength. So it will start to delete, but not completely delete. And you start to see that the pattern here, there you go, allows the tiger's body to slowly blend in with the seahorse's body. The only thing that looks a little bit odd here is that the, the tiger has a really big head and the, the seahorse's body seems genetically a little too small to support that head. So why don't we modify genetically the seahorse's body just as we did with the tiger's head. Now I clicked on the seahorse layer and I'm going to go to edit transform warp and I'm going to start pulling that body out in different directions making it a lot wider. So it looks like it has a little more muscle and that is a little better able to support the tiger. Let's pull this up a bit. There we go. And now he seems to have a little more power going on in there. Okay, now we're going to hit enter and maybe go back sorry let's take the move tool let's see if we can reposition the head just a bit there we go and let's turn on the background okay now one last little thing one last little trick I'm gonna show you is let's grab the seahorse let's move him up a few layers just below the head of the lion and now holding my shift key I'm gonna select the head layer and the seahorse layer so that they're both highlighted and I'm going to come down to the lower left here and link them. That way if I take my move tool and move them they are always linked. Okay, And let me turn on the background layer and there we go and let me turn on the other little seahorse who seems a little surprised at the look his mother has taken on. And there you have it. There's our genetically mutated seahorse with a tiger head. And of course, 
I'm going to save this, save as. I'll keep it as a Photoshop document so I maintain my layers. I'll call this one mutant, C underscore ocean underscore mutant, save. That's my Photoshop version with all the layers. I'll also save a JPEG version in case I have to email it to my teacher. And the JPEGs are a lot smaller in file size, easier to email. Or if I need it for a web page, it will put all the layers together into one. And there you go.